Hello and welcome back to the second video in our series on polycystic ovary syndrome or PCOS, PCOS. The first video looked at the diagnosis of polycystic ovary syndrome, the three pillars and the three steps of PCOS diagnosis. If you haven't seen it, make sure that you go and see that. This video is about the risks and complications associated with PCOS. PCOS is associated with a whole range of potential risks and complications. Although what people often remember when they think of PCOS is infertility or miscarriage, there is much more to it than these reproductive consequences. PCOS should really be seen as a lifelong metabolic disorder, a multi-system disorder that has multiple risks. PCOS risks can be grouped into five domains, namely reproductive risks, metabolic risks, dermatological consequences, psychological consequences, and finally long-term risks. There are five reproductive risks of PCOS that you need to know. Anovulatory infertility, miscarriage, preeclampsia, fetal growth restriction, and preterm birth. I won't say much more than that in this video. There is a whole new video on reproductive consequences of PCOS that you can watch to learn more. Okay, let's move on to metabolic risks. Again, there are five risks that I want you to know. Gestational diabetes, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular complications and risks, dyslipidemia and obstructive sleep apnea. Let me say a few words about each one of these. In terms of gestational diabetes, what you need to remember is that women with a history of PCOS who are planning a pregnancy should have OGTT pre-pregnancy and then again at 24 to 28 weeks of gestation. So there are two time points, pre-pregnancy and 24 to 28 weeks of gestation because they have a high risk of having gestational diabetes. Moving on to type two diabetes, because there is this risk, any patient who is diagnosed with polycystic ovary syndrome should have their glycemic status checked. They should have it checked at diagnosis and then every one to three years, depending on the clinical history. The recommended test is of course 75 gram oral glucose tolerance test or GTT, as this is the most accurate test but if it can't be performed for whatever reason, then fasting glucose or HbA1c can be considered. In terms of cardiovascular risk, there is a clear increase in the risk of cardiovascular disease. But in addition to that, there is potentially also an increase in cardiovascular disease mortality. Next, women with polycystic ovary syndrome are at risk of having abnormal lipid profile. So at diagnosis, regardless of their BMI, you should check their fasting cholesterol, LDL, HDL, and triglyceride levels. Finally, obstructive sleep apnea, which is associated with many other medical conditions. And you need to check for this formally by using a screening tool like the Berlin Questionnaire. Okay, those are metabolic consequences. Now let's look at dermatological consequences. These include hirsutism or excessive hair growth, acne, hair loss, acanthosis, nigricans, which presents as dark skin patches, particularly on the back of the neck and under the arms. It's important to make a full assessment of dermatological consequences, ideally using validated tools. Let's now look at psychological consequences, potential psychological consequences of PCOS. These include anxiety, depression, eating disorders, body image disorders, and psychosexual dysfunction.
it is again important to use validated screening tools to formally screen for these conditions. Your assessment should include screening for risk of self-harm and suicidal intent. Finally, let's conclude with long-term risks. These include endometrial cancer. There is a two to six fold increase in endometrial cancer in premenopausal women with polycystic ovary syndrome, although the absolute risk of endometrial cancer would still be very small. There is also an increased risk of endometrial hyperplasia. There's an increase in cardiovascular disease, as we already discussed. There's an increase in type 2 diabetes, as we already discussed. So it is really important to appreciate that the risks and consequences of polycystic ovary syndrome go well beyond infertility. Whilst this is a scary list of possible complications, it is important to remember that there is a lot that can be done to mitigate these risks. So in summary, you can have reproductive risks associated with polycystic ovary syndrome, metabolic risks, dermatological risks, psychological risks, and finally, long-term risks. I hope you found this video useful, and indeed you find the whole series is of benefit to you. And until we meet again in another video or at the weekend course, goodbye.